Robert Cook was a brilliant man, a child prodigy who taught himself how to read and write, and was reading newspapers by the age of five. He loved classical literature and was an expert chess player. He was fascinated by tales of exploration and dreamed of exploring uncharted lands. In high school, he developed an interest in biology and decided to become a doctor. He hoped that he might one day serve as physician to an exploration crew and help discover great lands unknown to Europeans. As usual, life didn't go as planned. He did end up making great discoveries, great discoveries in the world of microorganisms. Anthrax was a horrible disease that most often affected livestock, though humans were also susceptible. Anthrax would strike suddenly and could eliminate entire herds of cattle and sheep. A sheep would appear to be perfectly healthy one day, and the next it would be dead, cold and stiff with its blood having turned black. Veterinarians had no cure for the disease. When anthrax struck, farmers often had to kill the herd. The carcasses had to be burned or buried very deep, or the disease would return the next year. Robert Koch was determined to find the cause of this plague. He studied the blood of animals that died of anthrax. Koch noticed strings of living bacteria in the shape of rods, bacteria that was not present in the blood of the healthy animals. Looking for an answer, he studied medical journals, but all he found in them was controversy over the germ theory of disease. Koch decided to find a way to grow bacteria outside of the body so he could follow its life cycle. He made a crude heater out of an oil lamp and a box. This heater was able to maintain a steady body temperature. Having discovered that bacteria would grow in the clear eye fluid of an ox, he mixed some blood with this fluid and placed the mixture into the heater for the night. The next morning, he found the drop was swarming with the rod-like bacteria. The few bacteria of the night before had multiplied to thousands. Next, he had to find if this bacteria could cause anthrax in a healthy animal. Livestock were far too valuable to experiment on, so he decided to use mice. He made wire cages to keep the mice in. He took a mouse, cut a small slit in the skin above the tail, dipped a sliver of wood in the infected fluid, and then inserted the sliver into the wound. The next morning, he found the mouse on its back, dead, its body stiff, and its blood black. He then transferred the disease from mouse to mouse. Each infected mouse died, and after death, each had the same rod-like bacteria in their blood, which hadn't been there prior to being injected with anthrax. One day, as he studied a drop of fluid containing the bacteria, he observed that as the fluid dried up, the bacteria changed into little beads. Koch called these round objects spores. He found that the spores were resistant to heat, light, and cold and were every bit as deadly as the bacteria. Koch knew this was the explanation for why such extraordinary steps had to be taken to rid a farm of anthrax. When conditions turned against the bacteria, the bacteria drew themselves into spores which could survive both freezing winters and hot dry summers. The spores lay in the soil, dormant until consumed by an animal, then they sprang back to life. One morning he noticed half of a boiled potato left from someone's lunch the day before, lying in his laboratory. Little colored spots were scattered on the surface where it had been sliced. Examining material from the spots through his microscope, he discovered that each spot was a pure colony of a particular bacteria. During the night, bacteria had fallen on the potato, and where each bacterium landed, it had stuck and multiplied into millions of the exact same type of bacteria. Cook realized that he could grow pure strains of germs by starting them on solids rather than liquids. Further experimentation showed that gelatin mixed with beef broth was a perfect medium for growing germs. 
Robert Koch set down four simple rules to find which bacteria cause a particular disease. 1. Find the suspect bacteria in sick animals. 2. Grow the germ by itself outside the body. 3. Inject the bacteria into a healthy animal. 4. The newly infected animal must come down with the disease and yield bacteria of the same sort as found in the original animal. To help learn more about these bacteria, Robert Koch devised a system for photographing the nearly transparent bacteria. He discovered different colored dyes that reacted to different bacteria. Robert Koch proved that each disease is caused by a particular bacterium, and these infinitely small animals were capable of killing an infinitely larger one. Although his discoveries were groundbreaking, he did not find a cure for anthrax. Smallpox was still the only disease that could be prevented by vaccination.